What's up guys, welcome back to another 3D Printing Thursday video and today we are going to be bringing the Jet Blaster CETA back onto the workbench for a few more upgrades. We're going to be replacing the buffer tube stock with a 3D printed variant and then we're also going to be putting an AFG on the Picatinny pump grip which we installed last time. This one's made by Blaster Revolution. There will be a link down to the previous video where you can see how to install this and print it. Um, and what print orientation I would I should say and um, a link to the Thingiverse I will throw down there as well um, for this specific part. So let's move out of this out of the way and go over what we have printed. So first off we have this um, Caliburn AFG remix um, by Hawkeye. This is the AFG originally meant for the Caliburn. Um, Hawkeye's done a remix so your hand fits snugly right in here. And then you have a modified insert as well, which will go right in here to keep it in the Picatinny. There's a screw hole there, and then also a bolt that you can put back here. Um, for today, I don't have the uh, screw or the bolt that's going to go in there, but I can install those later. But we're just going to go ahead and do a test fit and see how it looks and whether it's comfortable or not. For this one, print it flat on the bed like this. You don't need any supports in here. It should bridge it just fine. Take a little X-Acto blade, clean up some of these edges where it um, was hanging and you'll make out just okay. For this one, plant it flat on the build plate, no supports, because um, there's no overhangs or anything, and just make sure your bed's level, because you want this to be real nice and flat. Don't want anything to be um, coming up off of the build plate. Put that there. Next up, we have a buffer tube stock by Tungsten, off of Thingiverse as well. Tungsten makes some really great stuff. Um, I can't suggest his items enough. I've used it in a lot of my builds. I have his motor covers and some of the stock parts on my Rapid Strike, and then uh, various other parts as well. So first up, we have the main section of the buffer tube. This will slide over the buffer tube and should be printed here. This is gonna be the bottom right here. That's why he made it two pieces. That way it can fit on a smaller printer, as well as you have a big flat face to print on. And um, for me personally, I put support blocker on, did not put supports here, put very minimal supports um, right here from top to bottom and very minimal in here. Um, I used support blockers so there weren't a lot and they came out really easy so it gave me some nice finishes. Um, if you want more suggestions on how to print it and whether you use supports or not, check out his video. He does a really great job explaining every single part he prints, how to print them properly with or without supports and he makes really great suggestions because he makes all these parts himself so of course he's going to be the, the best person to know how to print them and his, his video instructions are the best. Put that there. Next we have the back plate, which will go right on here. Um, he suggests to put glue, but there's also a screw hole that is here in the stock. Um, so today I'm just gonna be putting a screw on, but off camera I'll probably glue it later. Next we have the cheek rest, which slides onto here. Makes a kind of ugly 3D printing noise. When you, you know what I mean, when you rub two 3D printing parts together, doesn't always sound the greatest, but um, this is optional. So it functions just the same without it. It's just a cheek rest. You can put an M5 screw in here um, to hold it in place, but I don't have any M5 screws, so we're just gonna friction fit it on. This one's gonna take an M3, which I do have readily available. The last piece um, that we're gonna go over today is this clip that goes onto the buffer tube stock. So you'll line it up in the hole, make sure it's in the spot, and then it'll go right on. And it, it's, it's pretty solid. I printed mine 20% infill, that way it still had some flex to bend it. And you're gonna wanna print this one flat like this. As for the cheek rest, which I did not mention prior, um, you're going to print it right here. No supports are necessary. You can put a little bit of supports there, but I suggest not putting supports that way you don't have to get them out of these little circles later unless you use support blocker. But this should be plenty of adhesion. Just keep an eye on it while it's printing to make sure it doesn't topple over. But if your first layer is good, you should be okay. These were all printed at 220 degrees um, for the nozzle and 60 degrees for the bed using a micro Swiss um, on an Ender 3 with a um, standard nozzle. Not, I haven't installed my stainless steel nozzles yet. Um, yeah, so 220 is what I use. These are all PLA. Um, I think they all came out really good. I like how the blue on this, we'll see in a second, matches the Cita pretty well. And then the black um, is just another accent color that's on the Cita, so um, it all flows together pretty nicely. So we will um, go ahead and get these installed. Seat is back on the workbench. What we are going to do, like before, we're gonna take these pins out, we're gonna separate the upper and lower, and we're gonna start off with the stock. Okay, so for the stock, you're gonna go ahead and take off your stock. You're, you're gonna take off the stock stock by um, holding down on this pin, 
and then you gotta kind of force it a little bit, but you just grab it from both sides and it'll get over the lip that's back here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this because it's uh, really wobbly and that's the main reason for putting out a new one is I was getting tired of the rattling noise. Um, so before putting it on, we are going to go ahead and put some of the parts together. Organized. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and take the main buffer tube piece and the back plate. You're going to kind of nest them together because there's this outline which will fit right into the back here. Which again, like I said, I will be gluing it on later and I also suggest that as he does in his video. Then you're going to take it and you're going to screw it right into here on the back. You want to apply some pressure if you haven't already glued them. It's kind of a tight fit, but I've already fitted the screw in here so I know that it'll be just fine. Okay, there you go. If you do pull on this top piece and it'll come off, so that's why you want to add the glue later on. Um, mine is extremely tight, or has been tight. I've been putting it on and off to make it fit the buffer tube properly, but even then it kind of is a tight fit. See, once you push it on really far, it kind of likes to stay. So you might have to either sand your buffer tube or you can um, print this at 101% um, scale. But he made this to work the um, worker end strike buffer tube that you can put on an end strike attachment point on the back of your blaster. Um, but I don't have one of those, so I'm going to put it on my CETA because that's what I, designed, I printed it for. So we are going to go ahead and find... find a hole. So we've got it lined up with the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and shoulder it. That seems like a good distance for me. Again, it's gonna depend on the user. You can make it shorter or longer. Then we are going to take our clip and snap it on there. Now it is locked on. Okay, next we're gonna take this. Again, I do not have the M5 screw that he suggests you use, but we're just gonna go ahead and take it there and it'll slide right on. slides on a you can glue it if you want but um it's totally up to you i might add like a dot of hot glue underneath so that i can still get it off later but for now that's the stock i really like it um how it looks aesthetically and i think the translucent blue that i haven't been using matches the grip and the other blue parts pretty well okay so that'll be it for the back end today um but i definitely think that the stock piece is really comfortable it's nice and sturdy and locked in um, the, even though I know a lot of people have, have, have talked to are concerned that this might break, um, uh, I don't see that being a problem, and if so, it's such a small piece, I wouldn't mind printing it again if I had to. And now we're gonna bring it back to the front end of this Cita. Um, so you'll grab your foregrip and your piece, and one thing to make sure of is make sure that you can prime back all the way. Um, when you install, after you install it, because if you install it way back here, which I don't see why you would, you're not gonna be able to prime all the way and it won't catch. I know that's mostly an issue with uh, caliburns if you put your AFG too far back. But we are going to go ahead and find... You want the hole to be more towards the front than the back of the black part. You're going to find where you want your AFG. And then you're going to snap this in there. Um, again, it won't stay in unless you put a screw there. Um, or you can put the bolt back here to tighten it onto the rail. The bolt is mostly for security so that this doesn't break in the back. There's nothing connecting it across the back here. But these are both fairly simple installs um, and require minimal hardware. But you want hardware on something, especially if you're going to be um, putting in a hefty like 25, 28 end spring in these. Because these things can hit some um, pretty good big numbers and um, hefty spring loads. So we go ahead and got it back together, snap in our pins. Alright, and we're ready to go. And I think, um, even though I can't fit the whole thing in the camera, I think it really gives the Cita a nice facelift from its stock form. And I think the blue, even though it's not a perfect match, looks pretty good. It does, however, add a little bit of heft here in the back, which kind of balances it out because it was kind of missing that before with such a light best stock. stock. Um, he also has, if you're looking for a buffer tube for your flywheel blaster to hold a battery, he just designed one as well that's a little bit beefier and um, has some space inside it. Um, let me know if there's anything else you think we should put in the CETA. I have started printing a brass breech 
um, kit made by Jet Blasters to replace my Omni kit that's in here because the Omni kit is garbage. Um, and I've got the six kilogram spring and the stock bolt sled. I'm gonna have to buy a metal bolt sled though because mine keeps um, crunching on itself. It's really not a fun noise. I can't even prime it with the stock spring in it um, without it doing that. Um, one thing I thought that maybe I could cat up or if someone else has, let me know if you guys know about that, is maybe some side Picatinny rails to go here um, just for aesthetics or some sort of mount to put because there are these two holes on the side which I never understood. Um, maybe they have to do with the insides of the front up here. I haven't opened it so I wouldn't know. Um, but yeah, I really like how it shoulders now and the grip is very comfortable because my main gripe with the original Calibran grip is that when you were priming forward again, there was nothing to grab onto your fingers because you would hold it here and then you'd have to grip it to pull it forward to close the breech. And I really like how your hand nests in here between both sides and then you're locked in to go. Um, let me know again if there's any other CETA parts you'd like me to test out and print. I'll go ahead and throw them on the printer while I still have some more of the translucent blue and the black. Maybe we'll test out some iron sights next for the um, CETA. Other than that, I'll probably just slap on my red dot because I really like how that works. Um, overall, the CETA is great. Um, I like the the ergonomics a lot, but it just, out of the box, it's kind of garbage. This is one of the older models. Again, I cannot speak for the Cita S and its quality. I know that my model is one of the old ones, so the plastic quality is a little bit worse and all, but um, besides the bolt sled, I don't really have any gripes with the original Cita. Of course, you're going to have to replace the breech, but that's like most stock springers. Alright guys, so that'll be it for this 3D Printing Thursday. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll throw these links down below. Go ahead and check out uh, Tungsten's channel and Hawkeye. I know Hawkeye hasn't done an upload in a while, but he's been very active as of recently on Instagram and Facebook. Um, go ahead and check him out. He does some really great work. I know um, he's been doing some 3D printing lately and some remixes, but his integrations are some of the best um, out there in the hobby, like, ever. They're, they're just the best. Um, I, know, I don't know if he still has his streams up, but if he does, you can go ahead and look at those and see some of his work. And it's just the details and the effort and the, the amount of hours he puts into every build speak for themselves.